The time is 14 minutes past eight. Let's return to Holyrood and the row over the Scottish Government's £250,000 aid donation to Gaza. The First Minister, Hamza Yousaf, has described opposition claims that he may have bent the rules as an outrageous smear. The Scottish Conservative MSP Stephen Kerr has refused to back down, claiming there was a clear conflict of interest at the time of the decision because members of Mr Yousaf's own family were trapped in the war zone. There is nothing unusual in asking questions about how decisions were made and why they were made. And the reaction of the First Minister, I felt, was an overreaction. I do not regret doing my job as a parliamentarian in scrutinising the, the work of the Scottish Government, including the work of the First Minister. That is why we have parliamentarians, and that is my job, and I will continue doing it. Well, Keith Brown is the SNP's deputy leader. He joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. And why is asking questions about how government money is spent Islamophobic? Well, Stephen Kerr knows exactly what he's doing. He has centred on the First Minister. He's centred in this article through the Daily Telegraph on the First Minister's family. And to that extent, of course, his uh, faith. And I think this is absolutely typical of what is a toxic Tory group in the Scottish Parliament. The article itself, I think, is a disgrace. It should be condemned by the Prime Minister, who very recently came on to the steps of Downing Street to say we should stop stoking division and hate. And that's exactly what this article and Stephen Kerr's input to it have done. And if you don't believe me, just go on social media and check some of the comments that have been made there. The level of uh, racist attacks on the First Minister is an absolute disgrace, and that should be of concern uh, to Stephen Kerr. Did the First Minister overrule officials who said that 100,000 or so should go to uh, UNICEF to help with water projects in Gaza, but he decided that the figure should be 250,000 and it should go to UNRWA? Well, let's stick to what, uh, if, if I can, what I know. It is absolutely right that the Scottish Government takes that decision. Of course, the First Minister can take a decision which is different from that recommended by officials, if that was the case, and I don't know that it was. Of course, Have you that's asked what him? he's there to do. That's what he's there to do. Of course, I've not. I, I, I have no problem with the Scottish government providing support. But Mr. To Brown, the you've come on here today to defend the situation. The did you not? Did you, you not speak to the first minister the about this before you came on? If I can just uh, finish the point, there is absolutely no problem that I have with the Scottish Government providing humanitarian aid, as many other governments, including the, U uh, the UK government, have done for the humanitarian crisis uh, in Gaza. If there are issues with that, of course there are ways to raise that in the Parliament. Not to try and show yourself as a member of the Standards Committee to try and imply there's been a breach of standards here. It's absolutely right for the First Minister and the Scottish Government to have done this. And many people will support the fact that humanitarian aid has been provided through the route in which it's been decided to provide that aid. So it's legitimate for Stephen Kerr to ask these questions in Parliament. It's just not legitimate for it to appear in a newspaper. Well, I think I've just explained to you, Gary. Look at the article. Look at the consequences of the article. Look at what Stephen Kerr has done. Look at him smirking on TV yesterday, knowing exactly the reaction that he was going to get in relation to this. I think it's a despicable way to go about their business. I don't think Stephen Kerr is fit to be a candidate at the Westminster election. And both the, the, first, the Prime Minister should condemn the article and it should make sure that Stephen Kerr is not allowed to stand as a Westminster candidate. This stoking of hate and division has to stop. That's what the, the Prime Minister said in his statement. And I'd like to see him taking action on that. Should the First Minister make it clear exactly what happened around the decision-making process on this? Well, it is clear. The Scottish Government provided £250,000 of support. They, they sought to take it through the UN, as many other governments did. What is the objection to that? Uh, there is no objection that I can see. Of course, it was a, a, something that had to be done urgently because of the situation in Gaza. Most people will see on TV the situation that there is in Gaza just now, with people being killed, with huge crises in terms of um, uh, people being fed, and they will be rightly concerned that the Scottish Government provides that support as quickly as possible. That seems to me to be a straightforward and decent thing to have done. And it's now being besmirched both by this article in the Telegraph and by Stephen Kerr. Uh, but whatever the merits of this, to avoid this sort of accusation, given the First Minister's very personal and well-publicised connection with the story, should he have made the decision himself? Well, of course, and it may well be the case that he's taken this decision in conjunction with other ministers uh, involved in external affairs. Which potentially the is why we need a further explanation, do we not? Uh, what is to be explained about the Scottish Government taking a decision to provide humanitarian aid to Gaza? I don't see any other government being questioned on this. 
And it's very odd, isn't it, that the, the First Minister is a Muslim, uh, has very uh, keen interest, of course he does, and knowledge of the situation in Gaza, and has sought to provide support to... I, I think for the vast majority of people in society, they will find this both unremarkable and very welcome that the Scottish Government sought to provide this aid, instead of it being besmirched and undermined in the way it has by the Telegraph article and by Stephen Kerr. But you yourself cannot provide clarity as to around, around this decision-making process. Could, could, could clarity, I, I, But could clarity from the First Minister just put all of this to rest? I think it is clear. I mean, everyone knows the Scottish Government's taken this decision. It, you know, it's, and they know the reason why it's... I mean, I just find it un, uh, absolutely incredible this is being uh, portrayed in the way that it is, that a government takes a decision to provide support for humanitarian aid for an absolutely appalling situation in Gaza, and this is what we're discussing. And as I say, look on social media, look at the... Con I can tell you my mailbox has got some absolutely vile uh, correspondence on this now. Uh, and the, the level of racist abuse that the First Minister has to take is an absolute disgrace, and we should be trying to dial that down well, rather than stoke the fires of it. Well, to that end, when we need to dial down the sort of language that is used, uh, was the First Minister wrong to describe his opponents as traitors? Is that appropriate uh, language? I haven't seen uh, the First Minister describing anybody as a traitor. I haven't seen that. Well, he, well you'll, you'll know fine well that a couple of weeks ago in Parliament he repeated that headline that appeared on the front page of the Press and Journal and then was asked whether he should have used that language and was happy to, to repeat it again in interviews. So he's referred to an article in a newspaper. And you're trying to draw an equivalence between that and what has just happened in relation to the deal. I, I, I reject that completely. I think we should stick to the focus here, which is the idea that we are stoking racism and hatred and division. Exactly the point the Prime Minister said that he was most concerned about. Your concern seems to be about inappropriate language. I wonder whether calling and your they're... opponents traitors is appropriate language. Well, I haven't called anybody a, a traitor. And I haven't seen the... The, the First Prime Minister used those... The, the First referred, Minister at First Minister's referred, questions use the, the, those terms you will you, you, may, you may not have been in the, you may not have been in the parliament at the time but uh, it's well documented it's, it's available uh, for you to go back and watch this, this is where the bbc is going with after highlighting this attack from the daily telegraph and stephen kerr this is where you're ending up why can't we focus on the issue here which is the effects of the article in the daily telegraph and on the comments of stephen kerr and to watch him on tv yesterday on the bbc smirking using the word laughable i think at one stage but he knows exactly. Now, I know he knows what the consequences of this. He himself has been subject to uh, threats, as I have and many others have. And surely the point of this now is we've got to start uh, winding this down and it should be called out when it happens. And that's what the Prime Minister should do now. Keith Brown, the Deputy Leader of the SNP, thank you very much for your time on the programme this morning.